what a folks my goodness my portfolio is now down a whopping 40 thousand dollars and as i do here every week i'm going to offer you clerical insight into each one of my individual brokerage accounts from my tax-free savings account to my corporation on my three hundred and fifty thousand dollar dividend portfolio we're going to be talking about some tech stocks as well with tesla some bank earnings coming up my parents going into retirement but i want to roll back the clock just a little bit because tomorrow is my 30th birthday that is right i appeared on this planet on the year 1992 and it's incredible to go back and just see what the economy looked like back then because the top s p 500 companies on that year were general motors Exxon Mobil, Ford Motors, uh, Intel Business Machines, General Electric, Mobile, Altria Group, DuPont, Texaco, Chevron, Texaco, Chrysler, Boeing, Procter & Gamble, companies that most people might not even realize exist. Obviously, just a few exceptions here, but going back to that time frame, guys, the S&P was trading below 1,000, uh, basically 1,000 points. Today, we're sitting at over almost 4,000. Now, we're dipping back into the three high 3,000 range after hitting a high of almost five thousand how things have truly changed in my 30 years on this planet folks and just taking a look at where the markets sit today every bear market rally gets completely sold off into some new lows maybe we're finding a bottom maybe we're not but the only thing keeping my portfolio truly alive right now has to be the canadian economy the canadian earnings were very robust from the utilities to the telcos and then obviously next week we're getting bank earnings which i'm highly anticipating and just scrolling down guys one of the hardest hit stocks today surprisingly in the top 10 has to be tesla now there's a lot of speculation to why tesla is selling off so aggressively today one of those speculations let me move my head out of the way is that a spacex flight attendant said elon musk exposed himself and did some weird things and the documents show that the company paid two hundred and fifty thousand to silence her which makes this a very bold headline and elon's name has also been getting dragged into the johnny depp amber heard trial maybe you've seen some clips my dog stepped on a bee <laughs> my portfolio won't show any green yeah, I mean, there's so many memes coming out of that, guys. And then on top of that, you know, with the Shanghai factory having issues and shutdowns and all that stuff, when the stock is trading down, every analyst under the sun went from raising their price targets to now lowering their price targets. And Tesla, from its recent highs, guys, is now seeing a drop of, what, 40, almost 50%. But the thing you have to understand is when you're buying companies like this, guys, more volatility, more risk equals higher returns. But in bear markets, you know, that volatility will appear itself to the downside, which obviously represents that if we see continued downside risk across the markets, Tesla could easily go much, much lower than where it's currently sitting today. And many of you know, I sold my Tesla. I sold all of it. I sold all my Apple, all my Microsoft, every US stock I held in favor of index funds. And I wanna talk about that. So first and foremost, diving down into my tax-free savings account, before we talk about the US side of this account, taking a look at the Canadian stocks today, guys, we do, like I mentioned, have a Canadian bank earnings coming up. So I'm gonna be anticipating that, but all my Canadian stocks have been performing so robustly, like Algonquin Power and Utility Corp posted some incredible earnings. And I've never been green since I've owned this stock, but I've never really been down on it either. In fact, this is like the lowest I've been down on this company in some recent times. But taking a look, guys, everything's doing pretty good here. So I'm not really gonna be switching any of my Canadian stocks over into Canadian index funds. Because the problem with the Canadian economy is it's much smaller than the S&P or the US economy. So it's easier, I think, to hand select those large companies. And I don't think they're favorably going to go switching in and out over the next 20 or 30 years as rapidly as the S&P 500 has. But where things get really interesting is on the US side of this account. Because in the TFSA, all of this money is tax-free except for US dividends. There's 15% withholding tax. It's over the border tax. And I'm going to show you how I've set up my index funds in here because I made some pretty bold statements statements coming into the beginning of this year saying I think that VYM this Canadian dividend or Canadian this US dividend aristocrat kind of ETF is going to outperform the S&P and the Qs or the Nasdaq primarily just because people are flooding to risk off investments security investments and those are usually dividend aristocrats right and that is really holding to be true because since i dumped all of my us money into vym and voo vym is definitely outperforming to the downside now voo guys i've heavy weighted in this account over vym primarily because of that dividend 
withholding tax. This is just easier to get more growth without having to pay any withholding to any major extent because when I sell VOO at any time in the future, if I have cap gains on it, you don't pay withholding on capital gains from the US stocks. So what I've gone ahead and done, and this is my managed account, but I wanna show you my RSP because this is where I sold the rest of my US stocks off and I favored VYM over VOO because in the RRSP, you don't pay any withholding tax on over the border companies. So I thought it would be more favorable to heavyweight VYM in this registered retirement savings plan over VOO, which I think is more growth proponented. But taking a look at my managed account here, guys, just to give you some perspective on this one, I haven't really done anything here. I haven't bought, haven't sold. I've got a bit of cash in all these different accounts. I'm not looking to invest it just yet until I get through my corporate uh, taxes, which I guess we could talk about here in one sec. But just take a look, because this, this account's been fairly robust. Like I said, the Canadian economy has been keeping my portfolio to outperform to the downside. So, I mean, there was no guarantee that that was gonna happen. It just so happened that way, which is saving me a small fortune right now. Because realistically, my my portfolio is down probably somewhere closer to 10, 11% against the S&P, you know, the Qs, which are getting closer to 20, 30% downside. So I'm very graced that way, but taking a look guys at my corporate account, I've got some cash here. I'm not looking to invest anything until my corporate taxes are done. I've been sitting on such a large amount of cash. I think I've almost got 10, over 10% 10 of my portfolio right now is cash until I'm 100% certain of what the government wants. Once I figure that out, I will be offloading a lot of money and it's probably saving me some downside here because every day I wait, I'm getting a better and better deal. So I'll let you guys know exactly what I'm gonna be shoveling that money into. But in the corporation, since I started buying a lot of these Canadian stocks from the beginning of the year, you'll see I'm down on almost all of them here. But again, the downside is so limited in comparison to those US companies, right? And this is where I held my Tesla stock. I used to hold Google in here, a lot of those tech companies. And again, I favored them all over to VYM and VOO. I heavyweighted a little bit more VYM in here, but that was just to balance it out because I'm about 25% of my portfolio VOO and 25% VYM. And I just kind of divvied them up between all these different accounts. And we can see I'm down in this account 7.4% on VYM because I bought it a lot earlier than I did in those other accounts. And VOO, I'm down about 7.5%. So this is where everything currently sits this week and it's very intriguing uh, my mind and how it's changed over the last few years with my parents moving into retirement, which I honestly think they're basically winning the lottery here because they're not going to be investing uh, their retirement funds basically until next month. So I'm, I can't get over how lucky they were because we were running some risk assessment on the dividend income they would make coming back at the beginning of the year. And I re-ran that assessment and their yields are so much higher and the income they'll be able to produce is that much greater. So I'm very blessed and I think most people should be happier the markets are going down. It's kind of like a counterintuitive thing because I find it so odd and I've said this week over week here how everyone just seems to want to be affiliating with cash these days. People don't want to be aggressive in this market which I think is funny because they had no problem being aggressive a year ago. So this is where I will get a lot more aggressive again once I get my corporate taxes done but I've dwindled my cash except for the little bits in each one of these accounts. But like I said guys I will be continuing to invest and as people say in our chat group always be buying always be buying month over month, just buy. You're gonna buy the tops, you're gonna to buy the bottoms, you're always gonna find the mean, and you're gonna come out on the other end of this very well off, unless you're taking on a lot of risk by just shoveling all your money into the Tesla stock, which let's be real, in this kind of a market, guys, will likely continue to see some downside, and I'm not trying to beat up Tesla here. I still love the company, and honestly, if Tesla can drop to a, a, a range where I think it's unreasonable, I will definitely be buying back into it, but you'll have to subscribe to see how this story continues to unfold. But stay cool, stay awesome, and as always, I look forward to catching you in the next one.